Hello, I'm Luke Tafasi from Australia. And I'm Emily Ridlington from Canada. And we'd like to welcome you to the first ever episode of YOG TV. The show is brought to you by 15 young reporters who are working for the International Olympic Committee. Each day, we're going to be bringing you highlights from the Games. We're going to start off with a look at the town where the Games are being held. Innsbruck, it's the third time it's hosted an Olympic event, and Sonali Prasad has been out in the streets catching up with people, seeing how they're feeling before the opening ceremony. Hey everyone, I'm back. You saw me at the Singapore Youth Olympic Games, and here I am in Innsbruck. It's really cold here. I'm bunched up. But the best part, I get to see snow. I don't get to see any of the snow in Singapore. So here we are here for a reason. It's the first Youth Olympic Games, the Winter Games. And uh, Innsbruck is hosting it. There are a lot of young people. The city is beautiful. The city is preparing for the Games. So let me take you out on a little tour and we'll get to meet some people. And let's see what they have to say about the Games and the city. Innsbruck is a beautiful city filled with royal houses, warm people and a lot of snow. The city's history goes back a long time, but what's buzzing nowadays is the first ever Winter Youth Olympic Games to be held here. Everyone is excited and I managed to meet some people on my way who wanted to share their excitement. You're here for a very special reason in Innsbruck. Can you tell us why? Uh, we've, I, we've come, uh, me and my wife, and uh, to watch my niece curl for Team Canada. Okay. And I heard she's a flag bearer for Canada? Yes, she is. So that'll be really exciting. What do you think about Innsbruck as hosting the first Winter Youth Olympic Games? So uh, is it a beautiful place? It is, it is. We arrived yesterday and uh, we had a sunny day and I really like that's my first time in downtown and it's it's beautiful. I really like the old houses and uh, like here it feels like like a real Olympic Games, not youth Olympic Games. It's it's amazing. It's cool. So that's all for now folks. I'm going to explore the city further and I'll keep you posted. See ya. Thanks, Sonali. Now, while she was out on the town, I understand you were here at the hockey arena talking to Team Canada to find out how they're getting ready for the competition. Well, that's right. Your comrades are very confident, but they have a couple of big obstacles to overcome if they are to repeat the success of the national team at the 2010 Games in Vancouver. Well, the opening ceremony of these games isn't until tomorrow night, but there are a few sports which begin before that, including ice hockey. It's always one of the premier events of each Winter Olympic Games, and here in Innsbruck, it'll be no different. In Vancouver 2010, the Canadian side took out the gold medal match in a dramatic overtime win against the USA. The American team will be hoping to avenge that loss just a little bit here in Austria, but these guys behind me have other things in mind. We're here with one of the Canadian hockey players, Pelon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, how have you settled into Innsbruck? Uh, you know, it's been a challenge, but you know, just getting the sleeping patterns down, it's been a great experience so far. And uh, you're a national team, but sometimes that means that players come from all over your country. How well do you actually know the boys in your team? Oh, well, you know, we're spread out from all over the country, so in a short term like this, you know, it's great to come together uh, just briefly and need to come together as close as we can in this short tournament. And so who are you expecting might be your main rivals out there? Uh, you know, we got Russia tomorrow. You know, they're always a big, big challenge for Canadians and you, also the States. You know, they're always a big rivalry. And just finally, hockey is only one sport in, in this Winter Youth Olympics. What else are you looking forward to being a part of uh, here in Innsbruck? Uh, and just, uh, just a celebration, I guess. Just uh, opening ceremonies, watching the different skiers of how, how great the athletes are. Excellent. Good luck in the tournament and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Now look, Emily, we do love the rough and tumble of your national sport, ice hockey, but now let's just shift our attention and uh, take a look at something with a bit more finesse. That's right, our Alan Harris was checking out figure skating. The tickets are sold, the venues are ready, the athletes have arrived. Here, Innsbruck, Austria, for the first ever Winter Youth Olympic Games. But what is it like to be a young athlete preparing for one of the biggest games of your life? We go inside Olympia World, venue of the men's figure skating, to see what it's like to be a young athlete preparing for the time of their life. How do you define pressure? Strain, stress, tension? For these young athletes between the ages of 14 and 18, it's most certainly the bright lights, the loud music, and the packed auditorium of Olympia World. But with this pressure comes the opportunity for a great reward, the reward of an Olympic medal, these courageous young athletes have put in the hours of hard work just like anyone else. They have sacrificed much to be here. They have undoubtedly felt much pain along their road. 
They, above all else, know what it's like to fall down. But still, they chase perfection. Perfection, for them, is the refinement of their craft. Before the lights come on, before the music starts, before the spectators arrive, they will tirelessly continue to perfect their art, hour after hour, day after day, year after year. At the end of it all, some will fall, others will soar, but all will win. They will all win because they all chase perfection in the face of pressure. They all should be proud, for they are the new generation of Olympians. Thanks, Alan. Those were some really difficult moves and I don't think I could pull those off. Well, I can tell you, Emily, I would have no chance of doing it. But for the figure skaters who can, the ice has to be in pristine condition. And I understand that you caught up with the man who ensures that it is. So I'm here with Wolfgang Kingnest, who's the ice master at the Tylorian Ice Arena at Olympia World. And we're going to find out from Wolfgang what it takes to make the ice conditions perfect for competition. So Wolfgang, how long have you been working as an ice master? I've been working here in Olympia World for 25 years now and most of my work is in the ice arena. And how do you become an ice master? So how do you become an ice master? It's a good question. Um, you become an ice master by, of course, having a love of the ice, having a love of the ice sports, and then you have to be interested in the whole technical side. Preparing for a games like this, what do you have to do to get the ice ready? Of course, the temperature is very important. I have to get the right temperature. I also have to get the water right. Either I can have soft water or hard water, depending on the sport. So depending on if it's ice uh, shot track or figure skating, and that's what you have to keep in mind when you're preparing for a competition. Can you tell us about the different ice thicknesses? It's two and a half to three centimeters, but it depends. Outside it's a little thicker because of the light, but it shouldn't be um, thicker than that because the cold is too cold then. What do you enjoy about your job? Well, I love that it's a very diverse job. I do many different things. I love working with the many different sports and I also love working with ice because it's an element that changes all the time and so you always have to adapt and think in you what you're going to do. And for games like this, what challenges are there for you? Of course, the challenge is to prepare top ice conditions for the competitors, to prepare nice surroundings, good conditions general, and to see uh, awesome competitions with lots of medalists. And in Canada, some ice masters, especially at the Vancouver Olympics, they put a coin in the middle of the ice as a tradition. So I'm wondering if you have any special things that you do. I know Mark Messner who does that with the, with the um, coin, mm -hmm. who puts it into the ice. I know that because I was in Torino mm -hmm. and I saw him do it. Now, we don't have a tradition like that, but we have um, a lucky charm in the water. Well, the water itself oh. is the lucky charm because mm -hmm. it comes from the surroundings, it, or from the surrounding area. It comes from Heiligwasser and it's uh, a special water. Is it close to here? Uh, it's about 10 kilometers from the bobsleigh track. Well, thank you very much, Wolfgang. Bitte. And now let's shift our attention to something a little bit different. And one of the pranksters of the YOG Young Reporters Group has taken a look at something which is appearing for the first time here in Innsbruck. Arnal Dalmedo from Uruguay will tell us about a new way to communicate. Please, take a guess. What's this? I'm going to show you better. Now? No, you're wrong. It's not a pen drive. It's a yogurt. And now we are going to find out what it is. With Ramon, he is the event manager uh, of the company who creates the yogurt. And now he's going to talk about yogurt a bit. Uh, he's going to tell us 
what is going on with yoga, what it is yoga. So uh, a yoga is basically a social business card which you can use to interact with uh, other athletes. As well, you can use it for the CEP program, the culture education program. In terms of you go to the course and afterwards you just either yoga with the instructor or you can yoga with the tag. Towards that you get a point and then later you can get your prize, a sunglass, a drinking bottle or a headphones. How much times do you yoga? <laughs> do you use uh, this yoga since uh, yes. the games started? <laughs> Ooh, I think I made about 150 contacts so far, but uh, I'm testing a lot. And when when I give it to the people, I yoga with them right away. So, well, here we are with Sara, and he, she's like the the expert about yoga. And we we would like to know uh, how is it about uh, till now the this experience with yoga. Uh, so far it's been great, uh, the athletes have really received it very well, they love it, uh, they're using it, uh, using it to get to know each other across the delegations, across countries and it's really cool to see them connect and get into the yog spirit. Well, I have to tell you something, I've got a dream and that dream is to, change, to yoggle with the yogurt spurt, so if you, if you want. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. They ask you all the time this, no? Well. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Here we are, really comfortable, uh, <laughs> with the young ambassador from New Zealand, Sarah. Uh, we gave her Hello, the Kara. welcome. <laughs> and uh, well, we want to know what's your role here yeah. in the uh, Winter Youth Olympic Games. Yeah. So I call myself uh, the team cheerleader. So first I'm definitely going to support all our young athletes um, while they're competing on the snow or on the ice. And our second important job is to get all our young athletes to go to the culture and education program, which is really cool. And um, they can learn more about the Olympic movement at this program and meet lots of other young athletes from all over the world. How is your experience with yoga? I love the yoga. Um, it's been a great way for us to meet our athletes. So we meet with them and then we say, hey, do you want to tap my yoga? You know, <laughs> it's a good icebreaker for us. And um, the athletes really enjoy it. It's been really good. And um, in which moment do you yoga? Uh, before you say hi, when, when, when do you use it? We say, hey, my name's Sarah. Would you like to yoga? Oh, great. You know? <laughs> I, I, will, I will do it with you. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to do it. We'll so, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and what, what, what does it uh, work for? What, what do you do with what it? What do I do? Yeah. What, with, 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 yoga. with my yoga? Yeah. Cool, so what we do is, um, well, what we're going to be doing is all our athletes are going to go to the workshops and then instead of getting paper information sheets, they can just yog and get the information from the workshops. Mm -hmm. So it's good, you know, it's environmentally friendly as well. Yeah. So I, I saw that yours is already written. Can I, can, can I see it? So... Why is that? What, why is mine got writing on it. Yeah. So before I came to Innsbruck, before. my my mother wrote Sarah Van B, my name, on my yoga because she knows I lose everything. <laughs> and she actually named all my clothes as well. <laughs> and did you lose something? I have already lost my um, my hoodie, so <laughs> I left it on the bus actually. So if you see it, if you see a hoodie with a kiwi on it. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> wow, it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sarah, yeah. thank you very much. No worries. <laughs> Well, look, that's all the time we've got in this episode. I know I've got some yogging to do, Emily. Let's do it. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.